Hey, what's up? Matt Wyatt here. Mississippi State put up 51, I guess, on Missouri. So how did the offense kind of get on track? It's what the air raid is supposed to look like, right? Especially with Missouri coming in there and going man-to-man -man coverage for a good portion of the game, especially in the first half, and State beating it when they couldn't, State, well, didn't beat man-to-man -man coverage the week before against Auburn. Here's what I want to do in this study. I'm going to show you how the game started for State. It was more of the same from the week before, but after the first series, they corrected it. They hit big plays against Missouri's man-to-man -man coverage, and that was kind of the story of the game and how the offense got going. All right, here's a play in the first series of the game for State. They're down 7-0. We'll watch it. Motion, you get five out in the route. It's broken up. Here's why I'm showing you this play. Uh, we'll come back and start it over is you look at the way that Missouri lined up. We saw this a bunch, either two safeties or one safety back here in the middle of the field. Okay, but even though there's either one or two safeties, regardless, it's man to man on these receivers uh, pretty much across the board here on the backside. And one thing that kind of gives this away as the play begins to get going, watch the running back run out of there and look what's happening. So you get a quick speed motion out linebacker on this side is running with him. He's chasing him. So that's another indication that it is man-to-man. -man. So on the route, he's going to the three-receiver side because those safeties are staying deep. In route, inside receiver Jalen Wally, Jaden Wally, excuse me, running a deep corner route. So it's a chance to hit it, but there's a safety over the top. So the read then comes in here to double slants, one on the inside and one that's going to be on the outside. And he's going to choose the one uh, in the middle. So that's Austin Williams. You see the ball's about to come out. You got one that's on his hip trying to jump the route on the slant, another potentially coming over there. And so the key for the quarterback here is, do I get it in here, in that space, to my receiver before they can jump it? When you go forward, the ball comes out. And number three in white just jumps the route. This is one where it's sort of a 50-50 ball. There is some early contact, but it's bang, bang, they let it go. Even though 50-50 early contact, Receiver's going to actually expect to make this catch, but he's unable to do it, and it skips away. So here's why I'm you know, showing you this, is because it's an example right off the bat on first down in the first play of a man-to-man -man deal where the defensive player wins that one-on-one -on -one versus a state receiver. This was the first play of the game or first series of the game, and it was a continuation of what kind of got them beat against Auburn the week before. So you're going, oh boy, is this going to be more of the same? Two plays later, again, this is on the opening drive. They have a safety that is so far back, he's off the screen back here. And if you look at the alignment, State put two backs in the backfield. Again, this is the first uh, series, third and 10 play. Two backs in the backfield. They line it with three down, three linebackers, and a strong safety who's walked up right here. So how are they covering this? Well, it's pretty obvious. Man to man on the outside, man to man on Wally in the slot, one on one out here on this side with a safety back here off the screen somewhere. And they're going to man it up. So let's run the play. Six man protection back staying in and that's your responsibility there. The other back's trying to get out of there and you actually see both linebacker and safety on that side that are going to chase. And again, so it just puts it into one on one everywhere on the field except for that free safety back there in the middle of the field who's kind of playing center field. The route, State's going to go stop right here to hold that, and you get a one-on-one -on -one up the sideline here from your best receiver, freshman Jaden Wally. You find that one-on-one, -on -one, put it up for him, and right here, it's not you know um, uh, one of those situations where you have a lot of room on the sideline. There's He's been squeezed, you know, so basically he's right on the sideline. There's not a lot of room to fit it in there. So to get it to him, it's got to be 50-50 jump ball, and he's just got to make the play. And again, you know, third play of the game, and it's where a DB is going to come in here, get his arm on the football, play it really well, and keep this from being a completion. And so it's another, on the first drive, a 50-50 ball that they win. Okay, so... Will Rogers starts the game 0 for 4. They win some 50-50s in man-to-man, -man, and it's a repeat 
of the week before. So how are you going to respond? Well, we know State punted it. They went down. State recovered it for a touchdown in the end zone on the muff punt. 7-7. Defense gets a stop and then get the ball back. And on the second series, they started winning against man-to-man and winning the 50-50 balls. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so State comes back on the second series, and I believe this is what gets them going. One-on-one skinny post slant route to Cyrus Mitchell. It's man-to-man underneath with a free safety in the middle, and you just make a play. Um, we'll look at it here, kind of go back. This is uh, definitely man-free. Okay, so it's man-to-man responsibilities everywhere with a free safety in the middle. This guy playing center field, he doesn't have a man. He's he's going to track the football. Everybody else is going to have a man. They are rushing five, five versus five, and you block it with – excuse me, you can block that with all five offensive linemen. We'll back this up so you can see. And what's happening is uh, the third linebacker is matching up with the running back to his side, going to chase him. The other safety is matching up with the running back on his side, going to chase him. Those are your man responsibilities. And then elsewhere, man on the outside receivers and man-to-man on the slot as well. So it's man-to-man everywhere underneath except the free safety, man-free coverage. The route, when you look at it to the wide side of the field, you're getting a crosser in the middle, pulls his man out of the throwing lane. Because this back is getting out immediately, his defender is going to chase. And what that's doing is opening up this throwing lane to get it in here to Osiris Mitchell and give him an opportunity. He puts it on him. He throws it up high. And right here, this is tight coverage. He has not created separation. But even when you don't create separation, you've got to come down with the football if you're the receiver, and that's what he's able to do. Two hands extend. And this play, it was kind of a grown man type play. I thought it really got them going on this second offensive drive. Didn't push off and just go up and out fight him for the football. Same drive, just a couple plays later. You've already had one grown man play. You beat their man-to-man. They were able to come back and do it again. So check out this play from uh, Rodgers to Wally. We'll watch it first. Wally is up top um, at the very top of the screen up here. They're going to motion him in and then hit him on that crossing route. So motion him in. You see the guy running with him. It's man. Hit him crossing and then run away. And that's what you are hoping to get out of this. They are trying already early in the game to switch it up a little bit on the quarterback, show him two safeties like he saw earlier in the game. You're thinking they're going to stay back there on the snap, but that's not what they're doing, yet they're still playing man-to-man everywhere else. One giveaway is on the formation. It's two by two. Okay, He sees all these bodies at the line of scrimmage and then only two deep. But when you send this guy in motion uh, – Wally, when you start putting him in motion and run him in speed motion, look at his defender run with him step for step. When that happens and he runs in and pre-snap, he's chasing him. It's a pretty good indication he's got to cover him. And they didn't switch it off. He didn't stay out and one come in. They didn't switch it off. Pretty good indication it's man-to-man. But look at what the safeties are doing. They do this later in the game and force an incompletion or two. One is not in a man-to-man responsibility. He's going to collapse and try to take away digs and crossing routes and read the quarterback in the middle of the field while the other is going to rotate back to center field and try to take away the home run. Still, though, in the rest of this coverage, it's man-to-man underneath on everybody else, and they're running with people. So when you snap the ball, you effectively, in that first 10 yards, have clear outs on this backside. And because you started speed motion and have a guy chasing, you already have a head start right here. It's a matter of do these defenders run with guys and get out of the way? And it's already happening. You can see that. One has already turned his back. The other is about to and run with the slot. So you're going to get what you want right here. It's a matter of an accurate throw. So it's another example, this same drive, a receiver, this time instead of just winning the 50-50 ball, creating some separation with his route and with the design, and it's a throw that doesn't make him slow up so that he can catch it running and go hit the sideline and try to score. Break that tackle, take it on down inside the 10-yard line. Okay, and this is the culmination of that drive. They're down in here inside the 10, and uh, Rodgers creates a little time, splits the three-man pass rush, buys time, 
they fall down, you find a guy late, and you score. See the route. They're trying, actually, to kind of run that rub route after you get a clear off on the inside receiver on a three-receiver side, going to cross them up. And this can be the result. If you run it tight, uh, defenders can run into each other just like that and knock each other down. And uh, because of that, they get off their coverage, and that's why you get a wide-open touchdown. And the reason you get it is because the quarterback bought time and found it. Some examples of on the second offensive possession, State put it together. Win a 50-50 ball on a slant. Go up and get it. Just out fight the guy. Uh, run away, create some separation. Uh, rub route against man-to-man, get him open in the end zone. It's starting to work, okay? And it worked throughout the game. And especially in there in the first half, you're going to see here in some more examples where Missouri continued to stick with a lot of route matching and man-to-man underneath principles. And State just consistently completed the ball. Quarterback was reading it correctly. Uh, the throws were accurate. And the routes were precise. And they caught the football. All right, here's one where they're actually going to hit the back out of the backfield. And again, it's against a man-to-man responsibility. You see the play, it looks like rush, and he tries to peel off and can't get there. And they complete this for a first down on a first and 10 play. Um, so when you come back and look, again, it's another example, as I said, of you know an opportunity to find the right matchup against man-to-man. And this is another example of Missouri trying something different. So State's in a typical two-by-two formation, two receivers into the boundary, two to the wide side of the field. Back is aligned to the wide side. And how do they line up? Three down, ends walked up, so it's a five-man front. But they're in a nickel defense, so it's, you know, again, it's kind of a six-man box with that linebacker in the middle. And it looks like straight up man to man, you've seen, you know, those defenders line up over the top. But watch what they do on the snap up top. On the snap of the ball, the defender who is lined up over the outside receiver is peeling back and flying out of here. There's another safety off the screen that I'm betting you is trying to be deep over this half. So they're trying to put two safeties back there and confuse the young quarterback while still turning, matching these routes and running with guys in one-on-one looks uh, underneath in their coverage. When that happens, when you can see his eyes right now are over to the left side of the field. I don't know what the coaching point is, but as soon as he sees him fly out of there, you're going to see that quarterback's eyes come right back to that middle linebacker. See that? He's already bringing his eyes back to the middle of the field. Now he's going to work over here to the wide side because instead of two receivers versus three up here, Now he's got three-on-three out here in man-to-man stuff. He's just got to find him. When he sees this linebacker hanging in the middle of the field, his instinct is to immediately look and see, is my back out in the route? This linebacker's coming off the edge, but that's his responsibility, the back. It's a really nice job if we back it up, and I think it's by design. Marks, uh, the young running back, is going to stalk this right here and show protection, show that he's in Six-man protection. You see this? Step in. I'm going to protect. As soon as he baits him to come on in and rush, I'm not out, so come on and rush. As soon as he baits him into that, now he's going to get out. And 23 coming off the edge is trying his best now to turn and play catch-up. And uh, he's unable to do it. Rodgers finds him, and it is a perfect throw to a running back where there's no effort. This is a lot harder than it looks uh, in the course of a game to put it on him where it's no effort for him to catch it. He can catch it on a dead run and go make yards. All right, this was a big play and uh, for a couple of reasons. Now, it obviously is on a scoring drive. They're going to hit this slant here against man-to-man. But I'm going to show you why I think it's a really big play, kind of set the tone for the ball game. If you pay attention to what's going on in the secondary, and we could see it live. I I commented on this just before the snap as we were calling the game on the radio. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, here they come, I think is what I said. So the ball's on the right hash. So in the short side of the field, State puts their three receivers and a single receiver to the wide side of the field. Uh, the back is on that side as well, so a chance to get five out in the route. But in spite of having four receivers, you look at what Missouri does. Three down, three linebackers. They've lined up in a man look on everybody. 
Okay, and so the only defender that could be a deep defender is that typical free safety. We've seen a lot of man free in this, and there he is. But look how close to the line of scrimmage he is. Instead of off screen like we've seen him a bunch, he's creeped down here and is only, well, less than 10 yards from the ball. And so he's going to fire and blitz, safety blitz, and they're going straight man-to-man, -man, zero coverage, meaning there's zero safeties beat or deep. And you got to beat them in zero. So <clears throat> on the snap, you look, they're bringing the five that were on the front, a sixth, the linebacker, and number seven, which is the safety. They are bringing more than you can block. So that means somebody's got to win quickly against man-to-man, -man, and I've got to hit him before they hit me if I'm the quarterback. And look how he handles it. He does a really nice job. Now, the protection is done really well, too, because they're going to protect the middle and give him a chance to get this football off. He makes the right choice because the center fielder is gone. There's nobody back here to defend uh, other than his guy in man-to-man, -man, and you just got to put it on him and depend on that receiver to make the play. Get it out before you get hit. As again, you know, they're picking up blitzers, so if somebody's got to be turned loose. You don't have enough. You stand in the face of pressure before you get hit, deliver a strike, and doing this, doing this against zero coverage tells that defense and the defensive coordinator, I'm a true freshman. It's the first half. You just zero blitzed me for the first time in the game, and I beat it. Feel free to try it again. It sends a message, and it makes it much harder on that defense to try it later in the ballgame. So make the catch. First down, and you go score just a little bit later. In fact, it is the same guy, Mitchell, who goes down here, gets a one-on-one. -on -one. They get him inside the numbers. He goes outside move, one-on-one. -on -one. Quarterback puts it up on the back pylon, and the receiver wins that 50-50 ball. That's what you have to do in this offense. All right, here I'm, I've highlighted the time in the game. State's up. Two scores. There's only 41 seconds left trying to go on a drive. They're on their own end of the field, and this got the drive going. Watch the play. <clears throat> Going to hit Austin Williams one-on-one -on -one in the middle of the field. Excellent throw and catch. Um, if we back this up, get a chance to kind of see how it happened. And it's just more of the same that they saw from them the entire half. Now, because there's only 41 seconds, Missouri it doesn't have just one off the screen. They've got two. They're trying to make you execute and not give up a home run. But against three receivers, everybody's matching up underneath and just trying to play man-to-man. -man. Again, they've watched the film the week before. They're saying, Auburn did it. We can do it, too. And this is just a one-on-one -on -one route where he's getting into the middle of the field and a quarterback's got to fit it in there in front of those uh, safeties. When you watch it off the ball, you also had very intentionally two receivers kind of running off each other. So Williams is going first, coming inside. Uh, the inside receiver, who I think is Wally, is going next, trying to go outside. You get a little bit of a rub concept going. It's defended pretty well. Now, it's off, off screen, so you can't see the defender you know, stay in there and run. When I say pretty well, this kid jumped underneath the route and has got a chance to make the play. But because the throw is perfect, if, if you drive it in there on a line drive, he's going to bat it away or pick it off. That's just what's going to happen. But if you are able to let it go in time and put it in this void where only your guy has a chance, uh, that's best. And not only does he do that, but it's really accurate. And, and I say accurate because, again, if it's down, it's batted away. And this is an outstanding job by the receiver. So guys are just making plays, and this got them started on this drive. You got to look from behind. You can kind of see what we're talking about here on the throw of the quarterback. A little bit of air under the ball. Uh, you know, there's there's some arc there. If he puts this on a rope, there's a chance to bat it away. If it's underthrown, there's a chance to pick. But you got to get it up in that hole behind this underneath defender and in front of that safety. That is a really nice throw. Probably an even better catch. So they come back, and on the very next play on this drive, they're going to be able to hit Malik Heath in the middle of the field, this time against zone. All this man-to-man -man coverage is giving up throws. They try to go zone with two guys in the middle of the field, and they still throw it inside field goal range. If we go back and take a look at how it happened, it's really impressive. It's a great design. And, and 
in this first half, State had not seen a lot of this, a lot of zone. They forced them into it. This time, three receivers to the wide side of the field, single receiver into the boundary. Yes, they've lined up over the top of one outside, but look at all the cushion here. Underneath, there are guys that are not lining up over receiver. They're already giving you a zone look, and he knows that. And they've got one safety on this hash. they got another, another back here and going to try to stay back to keep you from giving up a home run. The route is pretty impressive also. I'll show you what you get. You get Austin Williams in the slot, who's going to vertical, and then push up and run at least one of those safeties off the middle of the field. You can throw a touchdown if they stay put, but if they stay back, you're going to get somebody open. So when he runs it off, that's when you're going to get cross underneath to either get somebody open for this throw or hold these linebackers. They're either open or the linebackers are going to see it, stay it, cover it. That's what happens. They stay up. Austin Williams runs them off deep, and so you get that slant in that zone, in that void. This is right behind linebackers, right in front of safeties, and it's a great design and an excellent throw. And it's an example of the defense trying to adjust and say, okay, we'll play some zone, but even when they do that, you hit the open guy and you just have them on their heels. Here's a good look at the route. You know, I showed Williams up in the middle of the field. He's really just kind of vertical right there up the hash, giving you a read. Uh, these crossing routes underneath are holding the attention of three, really three underneath defenders right here. And because of the runoff, that's when Heath is going to get in this void behind them. You can see all that open space, you know. And right now, if you look just at this view, you say, well, he's open. Not really because there's a defender back here. I can see his shadow. There's another back here. They've dropped. This is the right read, and it's a matter of an accurate throw in here where Heath can make the play. And you get it, and that's what led to the field goal before half. Okay, and I thought we'd take a look at this play, too. It's a big play to Wally in the uh, third quarter of the game. They're going to hit him up there in the middle of the field. but They're going to do it by use of a little motion, force the defense to adjust pre-snap. Let's watch the play first. Motion, they adjust. Uh, Wally splits the hashes, and he's open right in the middle of the field, and you hit him. So in trying to figure out what they're doing and how this happened, this is what it looks like to me, is they are doing their best to give Will Rogers a look that he's seen the entire game. Looks like man-to-man everywhere with a free safety back here. The only difference is something's a little wonky about it if that's what they're trying to do, right? Because the ball is closer to the right hash. You've got two, but really three receivers, including the back end of the boundary. Yet that safety is lining up pre-snap all the way over here. Well, there's got to be a reason for that, or else it's a bad mistake. And the reason is, once you start this motion, you can kind of see what they're adjusting to. Now, again, it's a little wonky, but he's dropping. He's not covering anybody man-to-man. He's basically a corner in a zone, in a three-deep zone. This corner who here is showing man, but he's actually going to turn his hips, and he is a three deep zone corner, or at least a zone corner. Now, maybe I'm confused because the motion is going to have someone trying to run the, across the formation with him. But what I see on the snap is inside turning to look up that receiver. I see a corner who's putting his hips to the sideline Going to let him go because he's got help over the top somehow, some way. Maybe uh, it's a bust in the coverage. What I do know is that the safety was back here, and Will Rogers can easily see that on the snap. And the motion that widened and, and deepened that corner allows for an easy free release to get that receiver open right in the middle of the hashes. Uh, it's a pretty easy read, I think, for the quarterback. It's just a matter of getting it out before getting hit. And that's the thing right here you like most about this play, I think, as a true freshman. He doesn't feel the rush. He's not concerned with it, even though he's going to get popped. Let's it go. Accurate throw up the field for a big play. Somehow your protection, you know, does not account for this back getting out. And most guys, you're not looking, but most guys are going to feel it. And even though you feel it, stand in there, throw a strike. And it really doesn't hurt when you get a big a big completion in the middle of the field like this. So I know that's a lot of plays and a, and a long film study and primarily all but one of those in the first half. But I think that illustrates 
the difference from the previous week to this week. One opponent to another opponent. Against Auburn, a bunch of guys that frankly just manned everybody up and won those more often than not, won a bunch of 50-50 balls. And this week it looked that way to start the game. But starting with that second series, uh, Osiris Mitchell and Wally uh, Williams and a bunch of those guys started winning their one-on-ones and 50-50 balls, and it just looked like an entirely different ball game. And they did it primarily against a lot of man-to-man coverage from Missouri. Hope you enjoyed that. I really appreciate you watching. If you're watching on YouTube, would you subscribe and hit the bell? That'll help me a lot. And if you're watching on Facebook, like and follow the page if you haven't already. More stuff like this coming your way. Thanks for watching.